Hi you guys, today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite things to paint, horses. Since I was in preschool, I have loved them so much. They've been such a big part of my life. I've owned horses. I've been in uh, a few horse shows. I did pony club for those horse people out there who know what that is. And I just love them and I still do. Unfortunately, my current lifestyle does not allow me to have horses. So the main way that I enjoy horses these days is through painting them. So I hope that today's video is helpful for you guys. I'm going to provide you guys with several tips on how to paint horses successfully. So without further ado, let's hop right in. Tip number one is to understand confirmation. It depends on the kind of painting you're doing. If you're just doing it for decorative purposes for a general audience who aren't necessarily horse people, you might need to pay less attention to this. But if you are painting for a market who knows their horses and often your most um, successful painting of a horse is going to sell to a horse lover, you want to know at least some basics about horse confirmation and that's a whole college course. Let's look at this horse. I went to a Frisian horse farm in California and I got some great footage and included in that footage was a very nice horse and another one was of an older horse that wasn't as nice. So hopefully you can you guys can just look at these two different horses and see how different they are and how their bodies are put together. Now this horse is an older mare. She may have even given birth to a few foals, so that can affect confirmation. She is nice, she still looks good, but she kind of has a long back and her neck isn't curved over. Like see how this horse's neck is curved over and it's got a nice curve to it. It's not curved the other way, like convex. Uh, but it's not as nice as you will see in the next video that I show you guys. And her face is kind of long for her, her neck. Her neck looks a little weak. Her face is a little long. She doesn't hold her tail out. If you get this horse at the right angle, she could make a beautiful painting. This is a Frisian mare. She's a nice horse. She moves pretty nicely, but some of her um, confirmation flaws could stand out in a painting if you didn't know what you were doing as far as painting horses. So, okay, here's another horse. This is a paint horse and you can see his back is a little long. It slopes in on the top. It looks like maybe his, his back has carried too heavy of a person possibly. So just look for that. His hindquarters aren't very pretty. They slope down. And when a horse has a flatter across where the, the hindquarters meet the tail, uh, that is, more appealing. Usually in a painting, uh, if they have a refined face, they're, the top of their face right here kind of goes concave instead of convex. That can be a good thing, so they have a more chiseled looking face. Um, this horse, I'm painting this horse just because I just think she's so beautiful. Like through this area, she has a nice clean, what's called a throat latch area, and you can see it and it goes straight across. And it's just a really nice line right there. That's something horse people look for. And also her face is nice and chiseled. Uh, she has a little dip here that goes down. That can be an indication of good breeding. Now let's look at some footage of a horse named Mystere. And he was at the same horse farm in Napa Valley. If you're interested in looking at these horses more, they do have a YouTube channel, Fairy Tale Frisians, I believe and they don't have hardly any views or anything, but they have great footage, just some beautiful Frisians. So Frisians are probably the most popular horse right now. Arabians went through a period where they were really popular. Right now, if you want to sell a horse painting uh, and you want to paint for uh, the market and what's selling Frisians, <laughs> Frisians, you can look at his neck and you can see how it has that beautiful curve. His mane is nice and full. His coat is nice and shiny. He's not shaggy and unkept looking. He also holds his tail a lot nicer. He holds it out a bit um, like he's got some spirit and he has a nice animated look. He's just got a lot of spirit in his eyes and things like that. So 
that's something to look for when you're trying to choose a reference photo to paint from. And may I add that I have recently made a discovery of some beautiful reference photos that are available for anyone to paint and their Facebook groups. And I think there's Pinterest groups too, probably, where you can go get free reference photos available without a copyright on them. Uh, for artists to paint from. And there are a couple groups that I'm a part of on Facebook where there are some gorgeous pictures specifically of horses. So I will try to find a link for that and I'll provide it down below. <laughs> okay, you guys, let's go to tip number two. Okay, tip number two is just make sure that you get the drawing right. I have been drawing since I was in middle school. And so that helps me get my drawings right but even now as a professional artist i rely on tracing or as we artists professional artists use the term transferring and usually what i do is i manipulate a picture in photoshop to get it the way i want and then i do a transfer that way using either a light box or i'll um, print out um, a tracing that i do in photoshop and then i'll tr i'll print out the tracing and then transfer it to my watercolor paper. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. And so it depends on what the goal of your painting is. Are you wanting to create a painting that collectors are going to want to pay some decent money for? Or are you just practicing your skills or want to do greeting cards or whatever? You have to think about the reason. So if you're doing a piece of fine art that you are going to try to create prints for and sell the original, that is usually my goal because I love my art so much that I want to make it professional. And what that means is creating art that I know will bring in an income to allow me to keep painting. So I often do transfer my images of horses uh, because there are a lot of things about a horse that you want to get right, especially the eyes. If the eyes look wonky, your horse is going to look wrong. So you want to make sure that you get at least the important parts of the horse correct. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to do a transfer. So the best video that I've seen this explained by a professional working artist is LaCree Fine Art. And I will try to link that below where she does a much better job than I can even of explaining uh, why that is not selling out or cheating. Tip number three get an interesting angle. The best angle to paint a horse at is probably from three quarters view or from another interesting angle, like from down under or you're up above his back or uh, another interesting angle would be uh, from behind. This is probably the least interesting angle, which is looking straight at the side of the horse in profile. And I've painted this angle very frequently. I've done lots and lots of paintings. In fact, the next painting video that I'm going to do for you guys of me painting and explaining as I paint is a horse that is in profile like this. You can make a successful painting, but you just want to make sure that you make it interesting in other ways, like having really beautiful light or having lost edges like back here. I really attach the horse nicely to the background and had this dramatic light on his face. And so what I found if I do a painting of a horse in profile like this, I usually have spectacular light. And you will see in some of the images that I have put in this video just to illustrate this point that most of them have beautiful light. Now the painting that I just finished is of a mama and her foal and she is not in the best light she's actually in light that looks like it was like high noon but this is the best image that my client had at the time for me to paint from and so if you're doing commissions you have to work with whatever the client happens to have especially if the horse is no longer with us or the horse has grown up like in this case the foal has grown up and she wanted a painting of the horse with her foal at this young age so we had to work with the images we had okay next tip this is all about painting muscles and the contours of the horse and horses have pretty thin skin and beautiful muscles that really ripple under their skin and this is kind of in 
conjunction with getting the conformation right is getting the shape of the muscles, the placement of the muscles correct. I'm going to show you some video footage here of me painting the muscles and the typical path to successful muscles for me I've found is to first dampen my paper lightly. You don't want it glistening, you want it semi-moist, damp, maybe a little bit level above damp. Uh, and, and you can test how damp your paper is by putting a little point of paint on the paper and if it spreads too much you know you need to let, wait a minute or two and let it dry some or you can blot or if the line kind of holds its shape but it just softens perfectly that's the sweet spot that's when you know you've got the right amount of moisture on your paper to paint a beautiful rippling horse muscle <laughs> they're so pretty aren't they um so Another way that you can successfully paint muscles is to completely darken the horse and use a mix of paint that you know will lift easily. My go-to is burnt sienna mixed with ultramarine blue and you can get so many combinations out of those two colors. You can get a nice gray, you can get a nice um, chestnut uh, colored horse, brown, reddish, uh, that combination of paint kind of runs pretty much the whole gamut of the horse coloring out there. Maybe um, only, I, the only color I can think of that that wouldn't do well with is a Palomino um, colored horse, but all other colors, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna are your friend. One, because they have a good accurate color that match most horse colors out there. And two, they lift really nicely. And that will come in handy when you're contouring your horse and you want to lift out the highlights of the muscles, but still keep them soft. How do you do that? You wet the entire paper, get it moist, not completely dripping wet, but moist. You can blot up if you think you've gotten it too moist and then go in with your scrubber and scrub and then blot. And I've done a whole video, I'll link that here. You can use a scrubber brush to get nice soft edges and contours and things like that. So I'm going to show you some video footage now of me painting a contour on this horse. In this particular contour, I'm using cobalt blue and I have moistened the paper slightly and let it dry to the right consistency. And then I'm going in with my Alvaro Castagnet brush with about a cream consistency amount of paint in my brush with some cobalt to put along her neck right there to just create that soft muscle that's in the neck. Make sure that you get the shape of the neck muscles correct and accurate because that's an important part of horse conformation. Shoulders are another important part of horse conformation. You can see here I'm working on the neck area and those, those gray neck contours that I put that are going down towards the ground at an angle. I did the same way. I just moistened that area of the horse with a mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna to create a gray. So it's mostly ultramarine blue with a hint of sienna. And I just put a, um, a really soft little line to create those contours. Uh, the foal also had some uh, contours that really stood out and foals tend to because they're really bony. So you can see this horse's, the foal's contours are even more pronounced because those bones really stick out because they're so young. And so I used a less moist painting surface with the foal and put in some pretty dark, heavy shadows to suggest the shoulder muscles, behind the leg muscles, uh, underneath the belly. And I did that uh, with a rigger brush instead of my larger brush because I was painting pretty small here and I had to have pretty good control. So what that meant was that my paper was just semi-damp. It wasn't very moist at all, just enough to keep everything soft. And that helped me have a successful outcome with the full. And then later, what I don't show you in this video is I went in with a scrubber brush for the full and then lifted out some highlights out of the muscles to really give them that ripple, but still keep it soft. So that was a very effective way to create the musculature for this painting and for most of my paintings. 
Okay, my next tip is one of my favorite things about painting horses, and that's towards the end when you put on the jewelry. Usually it's at the end. And so I'm gonna show you how I am putting on the jewelry for this horse painting. What is jewelry in a painting? It's usually the final little tiny details that you add that just add that last bit of sparkle to a painting to really make it stand out and come alive. And I'm gonna show you how that I did that for the mare painting with the foal. And these are my ink gel pens. They're from Japan. They are archival according to the company and they're great for adding those last little glistening details like the glisten in the eye, the white whiskers against a dark background. Uh, in horses, it can be the buckles in a bridle or as I'll show you in a minute, um, the deck decorations on like a horse's harness, like a workhorse's harness. But here I'm putting the glint in the eye of this mare. So that is what I would call jewelry, putting on the jewelry. And you don't wanna overdo it. If you put on too many uh, pieces of jewelry, it looks overwhelming. Just like if I wore five necklaces and uh, earrings and bracelets, that would be too much. Same thing in a painting. If you put in too many wisps of hair, too many eyelashes, then it can look overdone. And eyelashes make great jewelry. Wisps of hair like in the mane make great jewelry. And I used my gel pen in this painting to put in the little highlights in the ear hairs uh, where the sun was striking the, the little ear hairs. I put in a little bit of detail there and then you can see I'm putting in some little details in the mane of individual hairs towards the end of the painting and I did that also in her tail so that's the jewelry in this painting uh, let me show you the jewelry in another really successful painting that I have and do you see all these little pieces of decoration on the bridle of this horse I really think that is the detail that made this painting really sing beautifully. Uh, the horse is nice, but really a lot of what this painting is about is the bridle and some horse bridles are just really decorative. And in this case, that's the jewelry that really made this painting sing almost literally. It's the jewelry that was the jewelry in this painting. So, uh, and a lot of times what I use as jewelry are uh, eyelashes and you can see that in this painting I'll show you up close you can see you can see how in this painting I got those eyelashes in and the glint and the white there's like white eyeliner around the bottom of his eye and if I would have done anything more it would have been overdone but I think also uh, this buckle really helps the bridle and the details really help make this painting in particular sing. So that's the jewelry in this painting. In this unfinished painting, the eyelashes are really gonna be part of the star of the show. And also this white bridle against the dark horse is really gonna make this painting pop. This painting is not done, but that will be the jewelry on this painting. The jewelry is these beautiful white highlights where the light hits her face and down here. And they're just small little details, but they make all the difference in having a successful horse painting. Also, these little hairs. Look how alive and realistic that makes this painting, and it just really makes it pop and look really lovely. So when you're painting your horses, make sure you give them some jewelry. I mean, you want jewelry, right? So make sure you're giving your beloved horse painting it's do jewelry. We all want it. <laughs> My last tip to creating a beautiful magical horse painting is lost edges. I think this is even more important than jewelry. Maybe it's right up there. Jewelry is so important to create that magic in a painting that applies to a lot of subjects, not just horses, by the way, of course, but lost edges, somehow they really make a painting really sing. And horses are beautiful, living, moving animals. And part of their beauty is the way they move. It's just lovely. And the movement of a horse is part of its allure. So you really want to try to capture that in a painting. 
especially if you are painting a horse in motion or a running horse. That's another thing that I love about this painting that I did. In this painting, I've already put in some lost edges like right here uh, that I'm hoping what happens is that shows movement in the, the painting. Obviously it's a still image, this is just a painting, but somehow when you look at this painting, you, you can see almost the movement of the horse because of these blurred edges. Also, disappearing edges can really help ground your painting and make the horse look like it's part of whatever uh, background you have put it with. Let's watch as I create this lost edge in this painting. Okay, so what I'm doing, I'm splashing some, um, some paint to imply movement and then when the paint layer is still wet on that knee area, I'm going in with a brush full of water and spreading it around a little bit. I, you wait until the layer is almost dry. Uh, if the layer has a lot of paint in it, you can do this technique. So you start out with a, a layer of a lot of paint that's almost dry and then you can go in with a very wet soft brush like this mop brush and go in and just run some wet water over it and it'll create this almost like motion blur. Here's another example of edges in a completely different context which is this is more of a portrait where the horse is still and it's a more classic portrait setup to the painting and there are lost edges in this, but they're not used to show motion. They're used to connect the horse to the background so the painting hangs together as a whole. And that's important with any subject you paint, but with horses too. To infuse magic into your painting, those lost edges can really do it. So in this painting, I have a lost edge along here and it encourages the eye to just keep on moving past this right to the sweet spot, right? That gorgeous eye that has all that beautiful jewelry and the eyelashes and the glint and the beautiful soft look in this beautiful horse's eye that helps the viewer's eye move through the painting to the important part of the horse. Now, if this was a hard edge, what would the viewer's experience be like? It would be more clunky. They'd come into the painting probably over here and go, ah, ouch, I don't, I can't move, I can't move. And if you have soft edges that help direct the eye, see the ear is a nice soft edge that tells the brain of the viewer, just keep on going to right here and then go down the bridle and circle back up around back to this beautiful area. So you can use elements in your painting of horses, especially with bridles and things like that, to really help direct the eye around the painting. And you, one of the tools that you use to direct the viewer's eye are your soft edges and also your hard edges to direct them around and point. It's almost like putting arrows in your painting, but they're not literal arrows. They're just lines that help the viewer. See this line actually up the main helps you go from here, down, up, back up this line, back around. And these soft edges help you know, just keep on moving the eye until you get to, whoop, that, that stops you, that attracts you. And then it helps you keep the eye moving in a circle around the painting. Now let me see, um, I can show you another example of this. Here's a framed painting. I don't know how well this, this will show in a video because it's under glass. But this painting, I actually, if any of you know Splash at all, this was a runner up to actually get into Splash, which was beyond thrilling. And part of what the judge said about this painting is she liked how the lines in this painting helped you um, focus in on what's important. And this, this line of the white bridle against the dark horse leads you right up to that eye. And then there's these interesting lines back here that bring you back and there's soft edges that imply this horse is moving. There's soft edges over here in the mane and splashiness and lines that are pointing back towards the eye area. So the hard edges and the soft edges all work together in this painting to keep the eye moving around in this area. 
Okay, you guys, I hope that was helpful. I hope these tips help you learn a few ways to create a magical, beautiful painting of a horse because they are such magical, alluring, endearing, wonderful creatures. And I hope that this has helped you learn how to really capture the essence of everything that makes a horse so special. Please remember to subscribe and hit the little bell notification so that YouTube will let you know when I post new videos, which is at least once a week, Often I post new videos twice a week. Also on Patreon, I just finished a series of videos where I painted in real time. I uploaded about, I would say four or five videos that are about 30 minutes to 40 minutes long of the mama horse with her full painting. And I explain in real time, as I'm painting in real time, what I'm doing. So it's really in depth. So if you really are trying to learn how to paint, you might really enjoy that and you can join for just $5 and you can easily unsubscribe at any time. That's a great thing, thing about Patreon. They allow you to leave, but don't leave me. I love you. <laughs> but you can join just for a short period of time and watch those and, and leave if you want to, or join us in February for our landscape painting project, which is going to be so fun. I can't wait. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye. <laughs>